How many of us want to be more productive? Say I. I. How many of us are really putting in the work? Hello there guys, oh, my name is Patricia Bright. You are over here on The Break where we are giving you the tools and resources to learn, grow, navigate life like a boss and make money moves in the process. I hope you are doing well. Today's video is brought to you by our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform where you can learn from the greatest of practitioners in all things creative and more. Okay, so I hope you weren't personally victimized by my little intro there because it's hard out here. It is hard out here. We want more time, but we just can't stop procrastinating. One more scroll, one more show, one more sandwich. And then at the end of the day, we're complaining like, what, what happened? What happened to the day? In quarantine, I was meant to have abs. In quarantine, I was meant to pick up a coding course, but instead I just picked up a sandwich. Guys, that is actually me. That's actually me roasting myself because that is my reality a lot of the time. But today I wanted to do a video where we talked about how to actually have more time and stop procrastinating. And I have based this a little bit around one of my favorite books, favorite, favorite, favorite books, which is called Make Time. I've listened to it three times because I find it to be a very valuable book and I don't always do everything I meant to do, but whenever I listen to it, I'm motivated again. So I thought I would break that down today and give you guys a little bit more advice when it comes to being productive, stop procrastinating and making more time. Okay, number one, here's a way to make more time. Do more by doing less. Now I know that might sound crazy and sound counterintuitive, but I found it to be very true, particularly from my own personal experience. I had tried to do so many things all at once. My brain was going about this thing, that thing, need to wash the plates, need to sort out the kids, need to sort out the houses, need to do this, need to do that. What happens is when you try to do everything, you can't do anything. Our brains can only process so much. And when you learn how to like lazily focus in on one task or one activity or on one goal, you're able to actually focus and get that task done, wrapped up in a bow and plonked on the side. From my own personal experience, I've really found that feeling of overwhelm being something that has stopped me from doing anything. I know I've got loads to do, but I almost feel stuck, like I can't do any of it. And that's because I'm trying to process all the information to do all the tasks all at once, and it's not physically possible. So why not try looking at your to-do list, looking at all the things that you wanna get done, and just, you know what, just slash it in half and focus on one thing. This is very similar to a principle in the book, which is to focus on a highlight. So when planning your day, or when planning what is a priority for you, you should have a highlight. Now a highlight could be a group of things that you achieve, such as go through emails, update deck, and complete spreadsheet but that is the highlight. It's a bunch of tasks focused in one group that you get done. If you focus on one highlight to complete, you're gonna have an overwhelming sense of achievement when you can tick that off your list. And I can tell you now that if you completed one task a day, that's seven tasks completed in a week. It's better than only having parts of 10 tasks done. None of them are finished. Point number two remove distractions. And again, this is referred to in the book as well, but it, there's a reference to infinity pools. Um, the guys who wrote this book, these are guys who worked at Google and Facebook. They designed the stuff to suck you in and bleed you dry and basically stop you from being able to concentrate on everything. The principle of an infinity pool is to be able to continue to scroll, to scroll, continue to being updated. If you don't know, platforms such as YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, they they want you to stay on their platform for as long as you possibly can because the longer you stay on the more advertising dollars that they receive so they don't want you to come off if you sit there scrolling for eight hours they're happy they want that but that's not great for your life and your own psyche so i actually have a bit of a like an active plan i don't trust myself and i'm going to make that as another point I don't trust myself. I know that if Instagram is available, I'll be on it. I'll be there. I'll be scrolling away, double tapping all the cute girls. Like, you know, I'll do that. But instead I've come up with a plan to help me stop being distracted from a number of different things. So number one, I use an app 
on my computer called Boomerang, and so it pauses my inbox. I don't receive new emails. I hate when I hear ding, 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 new email, new email, new email. It distracts me, I open the email, and it stops me from doing the tasks that I'm doing. So I have this thing, it's called Inbox Pause or Boomerang, and no, all the new emails, even if they're being sent, everybody automatically receives an email to say, I'm not at my inbox right now. And then I choose to batch respond to emails at a particular time of day when I'm being really good. Another thing I use is an app called Freedom. Um, Freedom is a, an excellent app to basically stop you from using the internet or certain websites at particular times of day. I find that I'm on YouTube a lot, I can be on Instagram a lot, and I realize that I waste hours doing that. So I have this thing, and when I click onto the website, it actually stops me. It says, like, no, like, blocked, you can't use it. There's also another one that I use, and when I go onto it, it goes like, oops, sorry girl, you can't do it, or something like that. And it's an excellent little way to break that cycle of just logging in for the sake of habit. Because a lot of the times that we pick up our phone and we scroll on Twitter and we scroll on Instagram, it's a reflex. It's not because we really wanna be on there, but we've got so used to that habit. If you remove the app, if you click onto the website and then you're blocked, it kind of breaks you out of that emotional cycle and you can get back to doing your highlight or the task that you need to achieve. I've got written down here, do not trust yourself. You will self-sabotage. I have noticed this a lot about myself. There are things that I know that I need to do. I know that there's a deadline. I know that I'm ready. I know that I'm available. But for some reason, I'm like basically looking to the air closing my eyes to the task I know that I need to do. And I always wonder like what's in our psyche that makes us do this. And there is the principle of time being ever expanding. Like if we think we've got four weeks to complete something, it will take us three weeks, six days and 23 hours to complete the task just because we have that amount of time. So do not trust yourself. Self-sabotage is very, very real, but instead put some rules and some boundaries in. So if that is a case of you set yourself these arbitrary deadlines, I do this, I use a timer, I have a Pomodoro timer, and so I'm like, right, quick Patricia, you gotta do this work within this amount of time. And it's like psychological where rather than trusting myself to get something done by a certain time, I leave my trust in, in, in the timer. And I've noticed that when I do that, I'm actually far more productive. Another thing that you can do to make more time, to be more productive and to focus Focus is to make a commitment that is kind of painful. And that might be by subscribing, that might be paying all up front, that might be committing and signing a contract. If you do that, you are more likely to commit to a promise that you've made to someone else to achieve a particular thing. If you put up moolah, if you put up cash monies to complete a course, guess what you're gonna do? Do it. If you've paid for the four week Zumba classes, even if you don't want to, you'll be like, do you know what, I've paid let me just go, let me just make the time and let me just do it. When it comes to being more productive or having more time or to stop procrastinating, it's all about adding value to your life. There's nothing worse than feeling guilty about what you're achieving or what you're not achieving or because of the mistakes that you're making. No one else is doing it, it's you, you're looking to yourself and that is the worst feeling in the world. But when you make more time, when you become efficient about managing your time, you feel good, you have a sense of self-worth and then you can commit to doing something that's going to add more value to yourself. And this is why platforms like Skillshare are so amazing. I've talked about investing in myself, I've talked about taking courses. I talked about the fact that I personally, I create YouTube videos and I taught myself by watching videos and using platforms such as Skillshare to learn all that there is to know. If you are someone who wants to make more money, wants to build a business, wants to become more artistic, there are so many options and classes that you can take on Skillshare. Classes on filmmaking, UI design, and there are so many classes, I can't even name them all, that will make you be more productive and are a valuable way of using your time. Nobody wants to look back at their life and think, what happened? Well, what had happened was 2020, nothing, nothing at all. But if you've at least learned something or taken a course, you can check off on your sense of achievement of, you know what, yeah, I did that. I put that time, I put that effort in and I've learned something and I'm better for it. So I have a limited offer for you guys. You can get two months free membership, sign up and commit to doing some Skillshare classes. I know you won't regret it. Now this is only available for the first 1,000 people, so 
link down below. My next point when it comes to having more time and to stop procrastinating is actually to be honest and gentle with yourself. I know there's so many rules like wake up at 6 a.m., I wake up at 5 a.m., I work at 1 a.m. in the morning, I go for a run every morning, pause, take a step back, you need to do what works for you. I think it's really important for you to be honest with yourself and work out when is best for you. When are you the most productive? When are you the most proactive? When are you the most energized? And again, the book Make Time makes reference to this. You need to actually stop for a season and reflect on yourself, know who you are. You might not be able to wake up at 6 a.m. You might need eight coffees at that point in time, but maybe you're good at four o'clock in the afternoon. It's worthwhile to take some time, look at what your body clock is like look at when you feel the most pumped and take a diary recording of it even if it's a voiceover like i feel amazing right now and actually you'll notice that maybe at 11 a.m you're the most pro productive you're the most alert make sure that that's the time where you get your most important pieces of work done or the things that you really want to transform or to change done at that point in time. You need to be honest with yourself and you don't have to follow everybody else's rules. This sounds counterintuitive again because I'm not one of these people who's like, work, 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 no play. No, I don't think that's productive. I think that you should stop when you need to. If you're burnt out, if your brain's just not hitting it anymore, it's not by force. And if you really feel like you want a break, take that break, stop. Stop at a certain time and then start again refresh. But if you keep going just because you want to keep going, you are gonna burn yourself out and you're not gonna be any good to anybody later. My final point is to schedule like a maniac. I do this all the time. If you have a look at my calendar, I have blocks. Like my blocks have for kids play. My blocks are for work time. My blocks are for filming day. I have hour by hour blocks and I have them color coded because I'm that kind of gal. Um, I do not mess around with my schedule. I try and schedule myself on a Sunday, every single Sunday. And then I also schedule myself on a daily basis when I reflect on what I've done the day before. In this way, I can let other people know what, what's up with me I just follow the rules of my calendar and I keep it moving okay guys that is the end of this video I hope that gave you a little bit of inspo when it comes to stopping procrastinating and also having more time I highly 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 suggest you read this book make time it's excellent definitely check out Skillshare because if you're gonna have more time this is a great time to be productive learn something pick up more skills and be the best version of you you possibly can be Okay guys, thank you for watching and in the meantime, I'll catch you all later. Bye.